Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is me going over Q4 of the weekly contest 216. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about minimum initial energy to finish tasks. So this one is tricky. Um, so if you're new to this channel or, you know, um, I usually do an explanation uh, or my thought process more than just explanation. So if you want to skip to the explanation or something, just watch on 2x or fast forward. But the, the first thing I noticed for this problem is that you have to find a minimum amount of energy to finish all the tasks. Uh, you can finish the task in any order you like. Um, during the contest, I definitely in immediate, immediately know that this was di um, sorry binary research. Um, some of it is just looking at the constraints. Um, given that n is equal to 10 to the fifth, um, dynamic programming solution approach is going to be too slow. Um, you can't do anything n square. You can't even do anything on 10 to the fourth um, times n or something like that. That's going to be way too slow. So I ruled out dynamic programming, and I think that it could be binary search because, well, um, the way that I thought about it is that even though I don't know the satisfactory or like I don't know how to prove this or I don't know what the function is at the time that we're trying to quote unquote optimize or minimize um, what I, I think to myself was okay and you could kind of prove this inductively right um, where okay let's say we could solve a task you know a, the task in optimal order we don't know how to do this yet but let's say we can right um, if if we are able to solve it in x time x plus one time is always going to be good, right? Um, because you, with more time, you can always solve it, right? Conversely, um, if you cannot solve it in x time, x minus one time is no good, right? Because if you cannot solve it in x time, giving yourself less time is not going to be good, right? So that means that, okay, that means that this function, if we have a magical function that tells us... Um, Given, given an x time, can we solve this in x time? If we have this function, then we can binary search over it because now it becomes, if you think about it, just force. Uh, it's like, no, 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 yes, right? So that's how we solve it. So basically, this is how I did my binary search, which is that, yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I recommend going over just to make sure by yourself um, how this works the way that I explain it is that like I said this uh, no 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 yes right so that's what the line looks like um, and the way that I figure out about the bounds is that I visualize having the middle looking what happens if the middle is forced well if the middle is forced then you need more time right well you need more time and you cannot you know the current time is no good so that means that is um, you want the current time plus one to be in your search range and I also make sure that they're inclusive so yeah so that's why the left you goes mid minus uh, mid plus one and if your middle is good if your current time is good then yes then we don't have to care about um, more time because we already have a good enough answer right so then um, but this is still a good answer so you know just in case that you're right here you want to avoid just these and not including the current time so that hence that's why we said right to mid. And then the harder, uh, maybe, I don't know if it's harder, but a different part of the problem is, well, now how do you figure out this optimal? Um... Okay, and then now here we are trying to figure out how I get this magical formula, right? And actually, the thing is that we're trying to sort these tasks in a different way. And I think this formula is a little bit confusing and masks some of this. But let's say you have uh, this array, right? And let's say we have two, um, two, two tasks. You have this task and you have this task, right? So then the question is, should we do this task before this task or the other way around, right? And the question is, well, when can we do, let's just say, let's call this as A, just so that it's easier for me to say, and this is B, right? So when do we do A before B? Well. Or what is the earliest time we can do it if we do um, A first and and then B first, right? And then the other way around, right? So earliest time, oh, my computer's a little slow, to do A first, to do A, B, right? 
Well, in that order. And in this case, you need 17 times, right? How did I get that? Well, this is just 11 plus 6 because the minimum time for A is uh, 11 and the minimum, uh, uh, and it takes 6 times to do B. So it's going to take at least 17 times to do these two objects. And then now we do the same thing. Uh, earliest time to do uh, BA, right? Well, okay, this is a bad example because they all actually uh, happen to be the same. But uh, let's just say this is one, for example, right? Uh, so in this case, we need to do BA, it is just 13, right? Why is that? Well, the minimum time is 12, and one, um, one is, uh, you know, it takes one to do the, the first job, right? Um, so basically, this is the idea. Uh, uh, so in this case, we always want to do BA first because it lets you do it in an earlier time, right? Um, and if you kind of write out the forms, if you write out the formula for this, then you have uh, we do, you know, order order AB is equal to um, the min time of A, yeah, min time of A plus. Uh, require time of B, or the B A is mm, min B plus required of A, right? Um, and then now we just have to check these two. Uh, we have to make a comparison of these things, right? Uh, which is that uh, we want to take the smallest number from these two, right? And if you kind of look at the math, uh, it's a really easy swap to do. Okay, well, this is just the min A, uh, or depending on how you want to write it, but it's fine. Um, minus require of A, or the other way around, maybe, depending on how you want to sort it. Um, min B minus rec B, right? And the way that you get from here to here is just well, minus uh, the requirement B on both sides, require, minus requirement of A on both sides. So you get this formula. And this formula, of course, is allows you to do a key-based comparison instead of a, um, a comparison comparison. And you can write this in different ways. Certain different languages will allow you to do this uh, comparison directly. Uh, you can even do that in, in Python, to be honest, to, to do comparison between the two elements to get this uh, but th th but th if you make this reduction then you're able to do just sort like this um, and I added a negative around here to uh, do an increasing value um, and you could have sorted the other way obviously um, because it, I actually technically did it the other way with the require sub a minus uh, min a um, and then get the largest value Right. So basically, th that is why we have this formula. This is how we sort. And then once we have this sorting thing, um, now we know the optimal order to do the tasks in. We do them one by one, given a certain amount of time, as we said. So we have X amount of time. We just do them one by one from, you know, greedily in this way because they're sorted. Um, if our current time left has... Uh, meets the requirement, we return for, or if it doesn't meet the requirement, we turn false, that means there's no way to do it. Otherwise, we subtract the requirement because that's how much work we did, and then we return true if we could do it through the entire way. Um, cool. So what is the complexity of this? Well, sorting is going to be n log n, obviously. Uh, this function is O of n because we just go for each element once. So... And here is a binary search. The binary search technically actually doesn't search on n. It searches on a function from 0 to 1 billion. Why do I choose a billion? Because a billion can, for me, is just a, a big enough number, but also it is uh, the highest bound of 10 to the 4th times n, which is 10 to the 9th. So that's a billion. I hope that I'm right on that one. But in any case, um, and that is just log of the size of that universe which is what, let me say, is log u. So this is going to be n log u solution uh, where, you know, uh, 
log of a billion is about 32 or something or 31 30 something like that or 30 i guess so 30 times n so o of n if you want to call it that uh or o of n log u is the way i say it but yeah uh and in terms of space obviously we don't really do anything we just have a couple of constants so it's going to be all one space hand wave you on the sorting depending on how you want to do your sorting but yeah um that's all i have for this problem let me know how you did it how let me know what you think watch me solve this live during the contest and i will see y'all later bye bye uh thanks for watching hit the like button hit the subscribe button join me in discord let me know if you have any questions because i will always listen to questions um it allows me to you know explain future prompts as well when i realize what people are asking and thinking about anyway i will see y'all next week next contest next problem wherever you are bye bye